This video tutorial is all about DNA structure. We're going to look at what DNA is, where it's found, and what it's used for. DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is a long molecule that contains our unique genetic code. It's stored in the nucleus of every single cell in your body. And it's a little bit like a recipe book in that if you were picking up a recipe book, you would have the instructions there to help you understand how to make all the different um, cakes or breads or um, any other recipe that you might possibly want. Now, our DNA is a little bit like a recipe book because it holds all the instructions for making all the proteins in our bodies. So DNA carries the code that controls what your cells do and what makes you you. Now on the slide in front of you, you can see two carrier types, a male carrier type on the left hand side and a female carrier type on the right hand side. A carrier type is an individual's collection of chromosomes. Now the male carrier type we can see differs ever so slightly to the female carrier type in that in the little circle in the bottom right, males have an XY and females have an XX. All males and all females have two copies of every single chromosome. They have two copies of chromosome one, two copies of chromosome two, two copies of chromosome three, etc., etc., all the way up until number 22. They've got two copies of chromosome 22. Have the 23rd pair of chromosomes is known as the sex chromosomes. Males have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. Meanwhile, females have two X chromosomes. And that is what makes males and females different. Overall, therefore, because we've got two copies of every single chromosome, so we've got two copies of all the chromosomes, one to 22, and we've got two sex chromosomes, either X, Y or X, X, overall, every single human being has 20, 23 pairs of chromosomes, or in total, 46 individual chromosomes in every single nucleus, in every single cell in their body. So we're going to have a little look um, at what a chromosome is here. A chromosome is a really, really tightly wound section of DNA. Now, I like to think of it a little bit like those bundles of ribbon you get when you're wrapping up presents. Now, if you've ever seen them, they're like tightly wound little balls of ribbon. And you can pull out one end of the ribbon, you can tease it out. And that's a little bit like teasing out a stretch of the DNA from the tightly wound um, bundle that is the chromosome. The DNA molecule has a spiral shape, like a twisted ladder, and that's called a double helix. Your whole DNA, so all 46 chromosomes, is referred to as your genome. And the human genome is made up of 3.2 billion bases of DNA. And we're gonna look at what a base is, but other organisms have different genome sizes. So the double helix contains bases. There are four bases. You've got cytosine, which is symbolized there at the C, which always pairs up with guanine, G. There's adenine, which always base pairs with thymine. Now, because cytosine always pairs with guanine and adenine always pairs with thymine, Together, we call this complementary base pairing. So we've got the pairing up of the bases, and it's always complementary. Cytosine is always complementary to guanine. Adenine is always complementary to thymine. It's the sequence of these bases that form your genetic code. Now, this diagram here just shows this again. So we're just looking at the structure of DNA here. On the left-hand side, you can see the double helix structure. So that's like one spiral connected to a second spiral, which is why it's um, called a double spiral or a double helix. 
If you unwind that spiral, you get um, the image in the middle of the screen. So this is just to help you see it. And it looks a little bit like a ladder where the rungs of the ladder, so that's what you climb up, what you hold with your hands and um, you climb up with your feet. And that's where all our bases appear. So we've got thymine T always pairing with adenine A and cytosine C always pairing with guanine G. However, what we can also see on this slide is if we've zoomed into that top left corner there, the T, the thymine, you can see that actually there's slightly more to it. Now, all we've mentioned so far are the bases, which are like the rungs of the ladder, but actually the upright structures of the ladder um, are formed of sugar phosphates. So it's sometimes referred to as the sugar phosphate backbone. DNA consists of these two strands twisted into a double helix, and it's made up of smaller subunits called nucleotides. So each nucleotide is made up of a sugar, which is specifically deoxyribose sugar, which if you remember back to what DNA stands for, that was deoxyribonucleic acid. So this is a nucleic acid, a nuclear acid, but it's got a special sugar called a deoxyribose sugar. So that's why it's called deoxyribonucleic acid. The nucleotide is also formed of a phosphate group, which is shown or symbolized as an orange circle, and a base, so in this case, it's thymine base. Now, all the ph phosphates and sugars form the sort of upright stands of the ladder, whilst the bases kind of form the rungs. And as we've mentioned, we've got four bases, A, T, C, and G, and the two strands of the DNA are held together by hydrogen bonds between the bases. So A and T always form two hydrogen bonds, and C and G always form three hydrogen bonds. So it's hydrogen bonding that's holding um, the ladder together. And we've got that sugar phosphate background, or backbone, sorry, acting as the upright structures in the ladder. I'm now gonna introduce the term gene. So a gene is a section of DNA that codes for a protein and gives us the characteristic we have. So on the slide in front of you, you can see the term gene labeled there as a section of the DNA. And we've zoomed in um, on that section of the DNA and the exact sequence of A, T, C and G found in that particular gene will determine what color eyes you have. So if you have a particular sequence of A, T, C and G, you might end up with green eyes or if yours is slightly different, you might end up with blue eyes. And we've already mentioned that term genome that's also on the slide. That is all the genetic material in every single cell, uh, every single nucleus in your body. Now, there are some characteristics that you have that are determined by your genes, others by your environment, and some are a connection of the both. So on the left hand side of the slide, you can see the four different types of blood groups we have in humans type A, type B, type AB, and type O. The blood type you have is entirely dictated by your genes. It doesn't matter if you were brought up in England or America. It doesn't matter if you um, are really well-fed or malnourished. It doesn't matter at all what the environment is like around you and what your upbringing's been like. The type of blood you have is entirely dictated by the genes. There are some traits, by contrast, that are entirely dictated by the environment. So for example, if one person has pierced ears and another person has a tattoo, the genes that you have do not impact that whatsoever. Those characteristics of having lots of piercings and lots of tattoos are entirely environmental in their basis. However, there are some characteristics that are influenced by both the genes and the environment. For example, your height, and your weight, and also your skin color. So while some people might have fairer colored skin, if they then go and sunbathe, or if they go and have a fake tan, their skin color will change. So when you look at someone's skin color, it's based on the genes, what you have genetically determined, but also based on the environment you've been in. Similarly with height, if someone's really, really tall, it could well be that actually they've inherited genes for becoming taller from their parents. 
So inherited characteristics are coded for by DNA. However, if someone is really short, that might be because they've inherited genes for being short from their parents. Lots of their family might be short, but it also might be because they are malnourished. It might be because they have stunted growth because they've been doing, you know, developing their muscles, doing too much exercise and weightlifting too young. So there are lots of um, different characteristics that actually are influenced by both the genes um, and the environment. 